the Athletics and MLB Networks, Jason Stark, your baseball stories, 30-minute episodes on Stadium every single uh, Tuesday night on WatchStadium.com. First up is Mark McGuire, an old buddy of mine uh, from back in the Sports Center days. How open is Mark about the past, Jason? Well, I was really grateful that he was willing to do this, Rich. Um, he's turned down a lot of requests to talk about what happened 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and he said yes to me. And so... I, you know, I let him reminisce for a while. Um, he has a lot of great memories of he that does. season. He's allowed to have them. He was the man in the middle of the circus. But obviously, at a certain point, we turned to a, a, a topic that had to come up, and that was PEDs. And when I said to him, let's play the what-if game. Could you have hit 70 home runs if you had not taken PEDs? Everything about him changed. Uh, his his demeanor changed, his expression changed, the way he delivered the words changed, and he could not have been more adamant that, yeah, he could. Absolutely, is what he said. And obviously, I pushed back on that, and it was interesting to hear him defend it. Um, His feeling is, he was a born home run hitter. He was from though. The moment he came into he baseball, he was he hit his how many home, he had what forty nine home runs stick thin. Uh, he uh, led the league in homers and slugging in his first year right. in the big leagues. Right, that was eleven years before he broke that record, and so he's right. He was. He has a case for that. He looked a lot different then. Um, he feels that with everything he learned about himself, everything he learned about hitting. Sure, he could have hit 70 home runs. I think we all have reason to be skeptical of that. I pointed pointed out to him on the show that since there's been testing, not only has no one hit 70, no one has even hit 60, right? Nobody's come close to this. But his defense of himself is really interesting. And I, you know, part of my role in this show is to let people express themselves. And so I did. Well, I'm biased, Jason. You know, uh, I, I he, he couldn't be one of the nicer guys that you will ever come across. The way, again, regardless, PEDs or not, when he was going through the breaking of Maris's streak, he had everybody following him. He had the commissioner following him from stadium to stadium, inning to inning, at bat to at bat. He had networks following him. He had the Maris family following him. He had his ex-wife and his son and his uh, ex-wife's new husband following him and he was as gracious and perfect a human being as there could be as he was going through it and i i i again you know uh I, i've just been biased about him for years uh the ped use is beyond disappointing and upsetting but i do i, I don't know why he did it uh, other than the fact that maybe everyone was doing it and he was exposed to it in 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 oakland i don't know why and i i guess that that's a question for the ages when it all yeah, comes well, down I was it. one of those people following him around that year. I saw right. him hit 17 homers, and I agree with you. Um, you know, the people who thought he was not being as accessible to folks like us as they wanted him to be missed something important about him. He, it was very important to him to be a teammate, and he hated the fact that his team was not having a good year um, all these people were there just to talk to him, and there were 24 human beings around him in that room who he cared about, and he didn't want to be a sideshow, and that was the reason that there were days he just didn't want to do it. But when he did, I thought he was awesome. And, you know, here's what I would ask you, because I've thought about this myself. I, I, I bring it up in my conversation with him. Mm-hmm. When I covered that story, I thought it was the greatest story I ever covered, the mm-hmm. greatest thing I ever witnessed, because that the stuff that you saw, the people who showed up, uh, Barbara Walters came by one day, right? Uh, Bruce Springsteen was leaning against the batting cage one day. It was incredible. It was such Circus. a huge story every day. And now, knowing what we know, what happens to those memories what do we do with that i will never forget them it is great no i I, yes it was great it was great it was great it brought baseball back i remember cal ripken obviously broke lou gehrig's streak and took that took that lap around uh camden yards and everybody uh started healing from the strike 
and then uh, McGuire and Sosa hit. And I understand that they were doped up. Sosa still hasn't even come close to admitting it. Um, but uh, it was incredible. McGuire still had to hit the home runs. And now you could sit here and people might sit here and think, hey, look, he was he was cheating, et cetera, et cetera. He still did it. He still did it. You know, I, I think he only went one day with everybody following him around and he broke that record and it was and it was all over after that. And then the home run derby with the all century team at the all star game in Fenway Park. I'm getting goosebumps wow. talking about it. Yep. Where he hit all those home runs in his at bat in the home run derby and he broke his bat in the middle of it. I remember that I was doing with Stuart Scott and I were, were interviewing the players as they were coming off of the, uh, at their at bats. He broke his bat in the middle of it and still hit all those home runs. It was remarkable. Ted Williams coming out and asking him about hitting at, at the pitcher's mound. It's as great as it is. And I will always cherish it, Jason. And I'm not embarrassed to say it really. Well, you're really going to love this show then. <laughs> well, <laughs> because I, I did let him reminisce and his memories are happy memories. He, you know, however conflicted people like us might be trying to figure out what to make of it now, mm -hmm. he doesn't share that. He, you know, he remembers it as a as a great summer, well, that's as an awesome experience. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.